uh, in your opening hand. It would have been interesting to see if the Freeze Mage would be able to win in the long run versus all those heals. Yeah, usually you just want to drop down those scientists and get the secrets yeah. with them, but he had all the force, all four of his secrets in hand already, so. Well, he that's did really draw rough. turn one, two, and three, and then two more intellects, so he drew a lot very early, so. He yeah. was prone to drawing some scientists and some traps, but not all of them. Yeah, that's right. Usually you have at least like one or two or something in your decks remaining. Yeah. Oh, we're jumping right into the next game. Yeah, it seems they've started. Didn't really pay attention there, sorry. <laughs> we're getting in. And we see that Cypher has his priest left, so... Yeah, that's pretty much um, Cypher's last resort here. The priest, which is obviously still very good for uh, because of all the board clears. Yeah, we didn't catch that mulligan, we're sorry about that, but uh, we just got into the game. It's actually fast this time. <laughs> So here Parkins down here. We see that Priest it looks like a regular control Priest right now. Yeah, he's it looks fairly standard. Yeah, he's running Circles, Blade Masters, and Pyros and Belchers, so. Yeah, we've seen some Priests, uh, I've, I at least have seen some Priests cut Belchers nowadays to get even more control -y. Um, Running what instead? Hmm? Running what instead of the Belchers? Or, or zero. Sometimes, sometimes Priests run zero Belchers. Yeah, but what do you run instead of the Belcher? Just more... Um, more greedy minions, like yeah, legendaries? More, yeah, for example. Yeah, I, s I saw a priest that some guy, th I think, got number one EU with it. Was like a really greedy priest running Ragnaros, Dr. Boom, Baron Geddon, etc. Looks like... Um, especially now with Hunter out of the meta, you don't really need the Belchers anymore that much. I mean, the Belchers are still good to stop um, Druid combos, I guess, or something like that. But overall, you don't really need them that much. Well, yeah, but Druid's still predominant. Belcher plays such a big role in that matchup. Anyway, but we see there's right more now. and more Black Knight in every deck right now. So I guess they dropped Belchers in favor of other valuable cards. We see right now four one ones on the board, four Savis, and um, Cipher does have a way to clear it if he goes for Pyromancer and Circle. Yeah, it looks like he's doing that. But Pyromancer is going to be pingable by uh, the Paladin's weapon, which yeah. is rather annoying actually. It wasn't really. I don't, I don't really want to say it was necessary to do that right now because the Quartermaster was still a turn away from getting down on the board and he could have also uh, just played the Blade Master and heal up the Blade Master with a circle. Yeah, I think he could have waited on that a little bit, like one turn extra, and the Cultist could have cleared one of the, um, the minions and maybe yeah. heal up the Cultist for more value because otherwise he would be forced to trade the recruits into the Cultist. It was also... S oh, never mind. Um, Blade Master comes down, does. Oh, he trades the, the Cultus. So he gets a 4 6 Blade Master and turn. Again, though, it's already looking rough for the Priest, to be honest, unless, unless that uh, Thought Seal is magical. Yeah, Peacekeeper nullifies the Blade Master. Yeah, the Peacekeeper, one of the best solutions for the Paladin to deal with uh, an insanely large Blade Master. I wonder, though, why did he trade the Shield Master now? That enables the Blade Master to trade with Shield Master. And even stay alive if he heals it up. Well, I'm pretty sure she just wants it off the board. Hmm. Maybe he was afraid of a Holy Nova, that's why he attacked first. Yeah, I guess so, that makes sense. Thought Steel, you got a, a third Pyromancer and the Shield Master. I guess those are decent cards. Savis can just drop this Harrison, it will not get any advantage against the Priest. Although sometimes it can happen if the Priest thought steals the weapons or Tyrion even. Imagine you got a, a lone Quartermaster, that'd be so useless. Even if you thought steal a Quartermaster though, then you can also still get use out of it if you Cabal Shadow Priest the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's uh. true. <laughs> <laughs> you get a 3-3. Three, three. The Harrison though, like, every time I drop Harrison versus Priest I'm like, Damn, man, I, I bet they're going to Thought Steal one of my weapons. <laughs> yeah, Thought Steal, I guess one of those cards that I have really big issues with when playing against Rogue. Because it always happens that I get those plays through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. <laughs> Rogue's probably the best <laughs> class versus Thought Steal. <laughs> Dr. Boom comes instantly on the board. What and if Priest played Mind Control Tech here as well? That's I, 
Yeah, I've seen a couple of priests run mind control tech here and there, but usually they, they don't really need it. They have plenty mm -hmm. of board clear otherwise. Yeah, since they play more board clears there. But the Doctor Boom right now, really big threat. There's no Shadow or Death in uh, Cypress Hand. Yeah, he just played it versus Harrison. And Harrison's not real, a very good target for Shadow Ward Death since he's probably the weakest target that the Paladin has right now for Death. Since there's Doctor Boom, there's going to be Tyrion and Sky Golems. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, that's true. Savis could have just um, played uh, Holy Fire, for example, on that Harrison instead. Wow, he's thought seeing with Firemans on board, so he's blocking both Boombots. What did he get? He got an Owl and a Peacekeeper. Oh, that's Thought Kill. That's fairly okay. good, I guess. So the Peacekeeper got handles the Doctor yeah. Boom, but he's gonna take a chunk of damage right now. He's got a Peacekeeper, an Owl, a Shield Mask, and a Firemancer so far. Decent cards altogether. All of them have their uses. Maybe we're even gonna see a Peacekeeper on a Tyrion and then a Cabal. What about that? Oh. <laughs> That'd be insane. That has happened to me before. I don't want to see <laughs> that again. <laughs> oh, Savis, smiling blood in the water, just putting more pressure on Cypher right now. He had the option of just Leon playing Leon hands to get more options, but he wants that car that board advantage right now, just to take the game with that board. Yeah, and, and it's actually possible because there's a lot of damage on the board right now. There's 14 damage on the board and uh, three more from Consecration and Master for Battle. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, Even if Orkanai came down here, he wouldn't be able to clear everything. It is actually lethal if um, Cypher only uses the heal from the hero power. Yeah, but it's Peacekeeper. In the obviously, yeah, sure. obviously there's Peacekeeper. And the Sludge Pressure to, to stabilize. Mm -hmm. So... What do we draw here? An owl. Still not lethal though. Owl is a good um, way to just make the um, Doctor Boom seven seven attack again. Yeah, but then there's the taunts there, so you don't really get lethal. Yeah, you just you just have to consider what's uh, more annoying: the one attack on the Doctor Boom or the ta two taunts. Yeah. So consecration comes down. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna, he's gonna drop from Michael. So he's gonna get another. Let, let's another see if he actually chooses to silence the Doctor Boom. I'm pretty sure he's gonna do it. Yeah, I think he wants to hit for seven. Does he trade a mini bot though into the Peacekeeper? <laughs> he's going face with it. He's still thinking about it. And I'm guessing you avoid Master. Uh, I think using Master for Battle would have been, would have been okay. To ping it. Yeah. Well, that's true, but you haven't seen a Holy Nova, you haven't seen a Knock and I, so you should be scared about that. Like, if he mustered here and the priest came down with Knock and I circle, he would clear the entire board. And Except he'd be for in a the really good Oh, yeah, because the Divine Shield would stay on. That's correct. So. Yeah, Holy Nova does not deal with the Doctor Boom. Unfortunately for Cypher. You can stop it with a taunt, but even the taunt is gonna leave the Doctor Boom at one HP if he trades in Shield Master. And then Savis also has the option to just heal up the Doctor Boom with the lay on hands. That as well. Oh, there's the silence. <laughs> and that's gonna <laughs> be it. Top. That's gonna be it. Lethal with, with the Master yeah. for Battle. And Savis man just steamrolling with his paladin. He needed exactly that card. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, the first match of the day is over. Yeah, Savis takes it 3-0 in a decisive fashion. I mean, that was that was brutal. Yeah, showing why paladin still is very strong, even post Undertaker nerf. Like. After nerfs, you see the, the meta cycles into other decks. Like, um, I guess the meta should be greedier now that people aren't so concerned about hunters. So you can see that greed in this Paladin deck, for example. Like, it's so greedy with the big minions and the Leon hands and all of that. Yeah, and um, let's see if we can get some more results for you guys, because obviously um, all the other players have been playing at the same time. We have a tight schedule here. We want to finish this tournament in one day, and we started pretty late already. So um, 
Yeah, we have to. Um, we, we're going to be here for a long time, definitely, yeah. but uh, we want to see. Uh, yeah, it seems that we have a result for Vortex and Green Sheep, and Vortex won 3 1 over Green Sheep. So he leads his group, I suppose. Yeah, we see right here. Um, Vampy and Vortex have won. Uh, Vampy, Vampy won over. Uh, who did he play? Powder. So Wampy beat Powder, one of the favorites from their group. Yeah, Powder and Green Sheep are definitely the favorites from Group C. Whereas Vortex and Wampy are the underdogs, and uh, the underdogs won. Then we can see that Coldy has beaten Chucky. Oh, Not sure it, about the is score. Is it up already? Oh, yeah. yeah uh, Kaldi beat Chucky, and he beat him 3 0 too. Where can you see that? It's. Um, you Round can see. Win, zero. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, Kaldi beat Chucky 3 0. Actually, I'm going to put the link in the chat so you guys can see it. Um, yeah. Vortex beat Green Sheep 3 1. Wampy beat Powder 3 0. And Gnimsh beat Torso, which is a qualified Finnish player. So is a, a guy that you probably never heard of before, but he's trying to make his breakout performance here. He played versus Super Sark Nimsh first, and uh, he lost 3-0. And yeah, that, that's three zeros out of yeah, four Torso, matches. Torso was actually the only guy who did not bring Druid. Wow, that's so anti-meta. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he's getting punished here for is that. Is he countering Druid, though? I, I hope he is. <laughs> well, um... Yeah, we're still waiting, obviously, for a couple of more results to get in. Uh, but we're going to hopefully get them soon. I mean, obviously, our game was... Uh, they, they all started playing at the same time, I assume, mm -hmm. and uh, our games just were um, over very fast. So, yeah. From... Group A, we also don't have the result yet uh, for P uh, Pini versus Faramir. On this, uh, but we can already tell you which game we will bring you f in the next um, the next game that's going to be broadcast here, and it's going to be. Let me see. Let me check it the really quick. Winners bracket from Group B, which is Gnimsh versus the winner of Number Guy Blackout. Yeah. Oh man, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I, I, re I really hope that Blackout wins because I want to see him in action on stream. Actually. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be interesting. Not being biased or anything. So but we're going to be <laughs> casting Gnimsh, yeah. so that's also interesting. And it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, Gnimsh, uh, one of my fellow team members from Cloud9, obviously a very strong player. And um, also came out uh, strong out of um, his last tournament performance. He finished second in the um, Millennium House Cup that happened at the end of December. Yeah. That was his last tournament that he played, I While think. While in the last month, that you probably have not seen Gnimsh play much in the last months because he has been casting a lot of events. Yeah. But uh, he's making a return to the competitive scene and uh, he's been playing a lot of tournaments lately. We can see he's getting legend on both accounts. He's getting top legend as well. So he's really putting all the effort in. And he's been streaming again. <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah, Grimsh uh, definitely has put a lot of work into um, into Hearthstone as of late. Yeah, we, have, we have seen uh, Grimsh. Uh, I mean, be, because as a result of that, Grimsh has performed very well as well in the uh, Millennium, in the Millennium House Cup, and now he's um, he wants to um, perform even better right here. Just hopefully winning the tournament, and yep. he already is off to a great start with that first victory mm -hmm. against Torso. And now he's going to face the winner of Number Guy and Blackout, and we are going to wait, obviously, for this match. And uh, yeah, right now, for those of you who just joined us, this is uh, the Assembly Winter Tournament 2015, uh, straight from Helsinki, Finland. I hope you guys uh, all enjoy watching it. And <laughs> yeah, we're going to have some great matches. Uh, we're going to be here for a long time. Um, there's going to be at least... How many more matches? Um, at least three more matches on this stream, is it? Yeah, it's going to be like one, two, three, four, five matches. Thing. So after, uh, yeah, after this round, we're going to see the winner's bracket match from Group B. After that, it will be the um, loser's bracket um, from final C. from Group C. And then, it's gonna be go then we're going to go straight into the playoffs, the round of eight. Mm -hmm. And then the semifinals and finals, obviously. So, um, yeah, definitely a lot of great matches to look forward to. And... Um, yeah, let's see if Savis can also continue his performance. I mean, how <laughs> what that would be pretty amazing for Savis if he could just win two assemblies in a row, right? 
obviously. <laughs> I guess he's playing in hometown, so... Yeah, so he's <laughs> obviously the hometown favorite. Everybody backing him up. Also, a little more information about uh, this tournament. Uh, there's 12 invites, invited players and four qualified players, so... In the beginning of the Hearthstone scene, we could see that uh, it was mostly invite-based. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, you can see a lot more qualifiers, a lot more chances for people to get their breakout performances, make a name for themselves, and to actually become pro gamers and get themselves a team, some sponsors, etc. So these are great opportunities if you're a gamer, if you're a player, and you want to make more out of it, just look yeah. out for all qualifiers possible, try to play in all of them. For example, there's a EU versus China qualifier right now. Yeah, that's right. You can sign up for it on ESL. Yeah, if you're an um, European player, yeah. you should obviously play that. Even if, if you don't expect to win, you, you're going to learn, learn a lot. And that's right. You just have to eventually sink in your teeth as a beginner into tournament scenes. If you if you into the tournament scene, even if you like play only small tournaments mm -hmm. uh, online, then it's still a good experience yeah, because tournament uh, games are just uh, so much more different than the leather experience. Yeah, there's the format. Each tournament has its own format. And it's just, you learn to adapt to every format throughout the many tournaments that you play. Yeah. And every single of us, one of us pro players, we all started with those little tournaments. We just spammed them every weekend just to get the most performances, the best results, the best experiences. So anyway, um, yeah, people have been complaining as also in, co in the community that there's not enough Quali open qualifiers, right? But I'm really happy to see that trend actually, as you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, it's growing a lot right now. And, uh, and that's very good for the scene. But uh, obviously, you cannot uh, count out the players that are already established because they are invited for a reason. They yeah, have, of course. They have continuously, they have continuously yeah. put up great results on ladder and um, shown us great, great game, gameplay in the tournaments they have been invited to. And also, if they were not invited, many players also qualified um, through the qualifiers. We've seen um, people, yeah, we've like seen people like Saviz or Xixo. Yeah, we saw Saviz like won a, a qualifier. That qualified one guy and he got first place for VGVN number three. And then he went on and won the main event as yeah. a qualified player. That's huge. RDU, obviously, uh, back when RDU started, he also just came from um, out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, he through, qualified through for uh, the U versus China from 2014. And he got top four at the first three Mac Bucharest, I think. Yeah, I mean, many players that are popular right now had their breakout performance at qualifiers. Well, you could compare Hearthstone to other card games, for example. You came from a Wall TCG background, I came from a Yu Gi Oh background. And in every card game that is a trading card game, since it's a physical game, every tournament is an open bracket. There's no invite system. And you might you might compare them, but it's it's completely different. The inter industries are different. There are sponsors involved. The prize pools are obviously much bigger. Yeah. You're never going to find a prize pool like these. And uh, Yu-Gi-Oh events, Magic events, etc. Maybe in the Pro Tours, but even so, you're paying for your own expenses. There's no, not really any sponsors, so... There's some here and there, but obviously there's much more sponsoring. Yeah, going you probably can't make behind. a living out of yeah. uh, Magic, which is the biggest TCG, but you can make a living out of Hearthstone. Yeah, that has been also my complaint. It's it's really hard to make a living out of um, trading card games unless you're actually doing what the name implies, if you're trading them. <laughs> exactly, so if you're, exactly. if you're a trader, you can actually... The traders are the ones making money. the big bucks, actually. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, until the next game are, is going to be ready, uh, we're going to go on a short break. Um, so be sure to stay with us uh, up next. Let's see actually if the, if the results have updated a little bit. Um, I don't see anything new yet. Yeah, there's no new results. You can see people asking for Plug DJ. <laughs> 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 usual ECOP stream. Yeah, sorry, this is not the, this is not the usual ECOP stream. <laughs> I'm here to cast <laughs> right now and not uh, to give you guys uh, whatever you... Uh, We're not giving yeah. you what you need, what you want. Yeah. <laughs> we give you what you need, not what you want. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to go on a short break. Let's just contact the, the guys so they hear. And I think we'll be back in approximately, approximately 20 minutes. That's when the next match is scheduled to start. Goodbye.